In the last days of November, the main Russian bus exhibition BW Expo was held in Moscow, where a large number of new models of Russian buses, trolley buses and electric buses were presented. I will tell about them today. First, we will talk about new products with classic internal combustion engines. In the second half of the review we will devote time to new products with an electric motor. The main novelty in the exposition of one of the largest bus manufacturers in Russia, the Goz Group concern, is the City Max 9 middle class bus. This is a pre-production model. Preparations for its production, which started in December 2022, have been completed at the large bus plant in Pavlovo. The main feature of this bus is the layout. City Max 9 does not have doors in the front and rear overhangs, but its wheelbase is unexpectedly large and is 5.8 meters. The designers moved the driving and steered axles as far as possible from each other. So much so that between the front and rear wheels there is not one, as usual, but two wide double doors at once, and even at a considerable distance from each other. At the same time, the turning radius of the bus has not increased, it is 8.8 meters, which is even less than that of some classic buses of similar size. What gives City Max 9 such an unusual layout solution? And it gives an area of U200 BU200 low floor interior space unprecedented for buses of this class, which is as much as 10 square meters. Moreover, this is achieved through the use of inexpensive portal front and rear axles, this bus has bridges of the most common design. Let's go to the salon. As already mentioned, the entrance is without a single step. Opposite the front door is a storage area. It is also a place to accommodate a wheelchair or baby carriage. Several seats are also installed in a low floor space, that is, access to them is facilitated. Raising the floor only in the rear of the cabin, which is located above the drive axle. But the most interesting thing is that another storage area has been made on the starboard side. If the customer needs more seats, additional seats can be placed on the space of any of the storage areas. Interestingly, the City Max 9 is equipped with the only serial Russian hydromechanical gearbox for today. It is aggregated with a Russian engine, a four-cylinder diesel engine of the YMZ 530 family with a capacity of 214 horsepower. Thanks to the use of the Russian aggregate base, the level of localization of the bus was about 90%. Later, the developers promised the appearance of modifications of the bus with gas and electric engines. And here is a gas bus manufactured at a bus plant owned by the Goz Group in the city of Kurgan. It is called Cavs 4270L and with a length of 10.2 meters it can accommodate 90 passengers. If in the buses of the first series at the entrance in both doorways there were small steps, but now the designers managed to get rid of them. That is, the front part of the Cavs 4270 cabin is low floor without any exaggeration. And at the end of the story about the novelties of the Goz Group with an internal combustion engine, a few words about the pre-production model of a small half-hood bus with a capacity of 32 passengers. It was developed on the basis of a medium-duty truck and will be produced at a bus plant in the city of Pavlov. This bus is relatively small, but in terms of layout it is similar to large class city buses. A wide double leaf door for passengers with a stepless entrance is also made here, a lowered floor level is also in the central part of the cabin, and the use of a rear air suspension allows you to implement the function of tilting the body towards the stop. Now let's see what another major Russian bus manufacturer, Komoz, brought to the exhibition. At its booth, this company showed a truly amazing development. The Komoz 6250 off-road bus. At first glance, the developer simply took the bus body and put it on a standard two-axle chassis of a serial off-road truck. In fact this is not true. If only because Komoz 6250 received a rear air suspension and an automatic transmission that are not used on serial Komoz off-road vehicles. This is a Chinese hydromechanical gearbox, since in Russia there is no production of hydromechanical gearboxes designed for such a torque. By the way, the gas engine of this subbus is also Chinese. True, given that after the imposition of sanctions, the Chinese are not enthusiastically cooperating with Komoz, its designers are actively working on a fully localized version of this subbus, which will receive the power unit of Komoz's own production. True, it is no longer gas, but diesel. However, such a replacement did not prevent the leading Russian gas-producing company Gazprom from ordering more than 400 of these from Komoz. Let's see what Komoz 6250 has in the cabin. 
because of the hefty ground clearance, there was such an impressive staircase here. In the cabin, as we can see, seats are installed just like in tourist buses. Soft, profiled, with armrests and high reclining backs. And this is what the driver's workplace looks like. The first impression is that it is very spacious and there is no partition between the driver's seat and the rest of the cabin. The engine compartment is covered with a wide lid, on which you can safely walk. Since the gearbox is automatic, there is, of course, no classic lever for shifting it. And here is another novelty of the Comos company. The most spacious Comos 6299 articulated bus for 155 passengers in its lineup, which this time was shown in a new gas modification. True, his articulation mechanism is Hubner, and this may become a problem with the further production of Comos articulated buses, since almost all the main western component suppliers have left Russia. But representatives of Russian bus factories who worked at the exhibition reported that Chinese counterparts had already been selected for Hubner articulation mechanisms, some of which, in addition to lower cost, turned out to be more durable and less whimsical according to the results of the tests. And here is another bus manufactured by Comos of the same family, but already in a version with an overall length of 12 meters, and no longer with a gas, but with a diesel engine produced by Comos itself. The novelty of this version is that it is intended not for urban, but for suburban transportation. Unlike the city bus, the layout here, as you can clearly see, is semi-low floor, which means that instead of a very expensive portal drive axle, it became possible to install a conventional axle. There is no accumulation platform, due to its absence, the number of seats has been increased, of which there are exactly 40. The ascent to the rear of the cabin is along two small steps. And, pay attention, the seats here are of increased comfort, softer, with profiled backs with seat belts, and, importantly, with a good distance between the rows, including, and on the very last row, where sometimes there is not much space for passengers' legs. In the rear of the cabin, under the ceiling, luggage racks stretched out. Over the past years, city and suburban buses of the Comos brand were equipped with portal bridges of the German company ZF. After the imposition of sanctions against Russian bus manufacturers, they had to quickly look for alternative bridge manufacturers in China. And such manufacturers were found very quickly. As practice has shown, their bridges are cheaper, and in terms of the main parameters they are in no way inferior to German ones. Now let's move on to Russian new models with electric motors. The most compact among them was the Gazelle City produced by the Goz Group. This is a small sized model, but it has a wide double leaf door, an entrance to the salon without steps and a completely low floor in the central part of the cabin. In 2021, this bus was shown in a version with a hydrogen engine, and this time a modification closer to reality was brought to the exhibition, a classic electric bus with batteries and an electric motor. The Gazelle City has a standard drive axle, and the electric motor is located separately in the front of the body, to the right of the driver's seat. There are two battery packs, one in the front, the other in the back. The power reserve does not depend on the operation of the heating system, it runs on compressed methane. On a single charge, the Gazelle City can travel 150 km, this is not so much and not enough to work the entire shift on most urban routes. Therefore, Gazelle City will have to call in recharging, which takes 45 minutes. Another promising electric bus at the Goz Group stand was the Experimental E-City Max 12 with a capacity of 85 passengers. This is a classic urban electric bus. 12 meters, 3 doors, with a completely low floor level throughout the cabin. The power reserve on one charge is 200 kilometers. This model is interesting in that it is the first in the line of a promising family of buses and electric buses of the Goz Group, and in the future, modifications of different lengths, different capacities and with different power units will be created on the basis of this sample. The Moz 30320 electric bus shown at the exhibition is not the newest model, which appeared after the third generation Moz bus put into production in 2019. To date, designers are actively engaged in the localization of the aggregate base of this electric bus, including by supplying it with Russian electrical equipment and control systems. But the Moz 303 T20 trolleybus accommodating 90 passengers made its debut at the exhibition. It was created on the same platform as the electric bus. 
that is, using the front portal axle of MOZ's own production with dependent or independent suspension, and with the imported rear portal axle, which is driven by Russian-made asynchronous electric motor. Interestingly, for the 20km autonomous run, the exhibition sample of the trolleybus did not use batteries, as usual, but supercapacitors. Let's go to the salon. First of all, let's note that the entrance to the driver's cab is separate, that is, completely isolated, through one of the halves of the double leaf door in the front overhang. The interior design of the cabin is at a decent level. And the steering wheel, as it is now accepted, is made multifunctional. Through the second half of the front door of the trolley bus, fenced off with a solid partition, we get into its salon. It contains comfortable plastic seats with eye-pleasing red burgundy upholstery already familiar to all modern passenger vehicles of the Minsk automobile plant. Opposite the central door is a traditional storage area, and quite an impressive size. Not only a pram, but also an adult bike can easily fit here. A large number of USB ports for charging gadgets draws attention. The Russian company PC Transport Systems has been producing the Admiral Trolleybus for several years now. Now it is the most demanded trolleybus in the Russian market. At the exhibition, its modernized version was demonstrated, which is distinguished by a slightly modified design on the outside and inside, an increased number of seats, a rearrangement of electrical equipment installed on the roof and the use of new equipment in the driver's cab. Today, Admiral Trolleybuses are assembled at two Russian factories, one in ST. Petersburg, the other in the city of Engels. The main debutant at the booth of PC Transport Systems was the newest electric bus general. It is clear that it is maximally unified with the Admiral Trolleybus in terms of the body and the units used, but instead of the German front suspension ZF, there is already an independent suspension of the Russian company Rostar, and instead of the rear German drive axle ZF, a portal bridge was also installed, but already made in China. Both models shown at the exhibition are equipped with a Russian-made electric motor with a capacity of 180 kW. The battery capacity of the General Electric bus, depending on their number, is enough for a distance of 40 to 100 km. It is clear that you cannot do without their additional recharging while working on the route. It is in this recharging system that the main feature of the General lies, in its design, for the first time, a universal combined method of charging batteries was used. That is, an electric bus can be recharged in the parking lot of a transport company from a socket during a night stop, it can be dynamically charged directly while driving through trolleybus current collectors from a contact trolleybus network, or it can be done through the same trolleybus current collectors from fast charging stations at the end points of the route. Let's go and see what the general has inside. Let's take a look at the cockpit first. All control buttons for the electric bus systems are grouped on the center console. As you can see, there is a fully digital instrument panel and a special device for driver control. Like most modern analogs, the steering wheel is made multifunctional. And what is interesting in the salon, and in the cabin you can choose the color of the interior lighting. Since both bridges are portal bridges, the floor level is low throughout its length. On the port side, in the usual place, there is a rather capacious storage area with a pair of folding seats. In general, at first glance, no surprises. Except for one thing. If you walk through the cabin to the very end, you will be surprised to find that the ladder to the roof is located not outside the body, but inside. This ladder is accessed from the floor, and it is placed between several seats in the last row. Original solution. On this ladder you can safely climb directly into the hatch located on the roof. Two more interesting electrical novelties were presented at the exhibition for the first time by the Russian company Sinara Transport Vehicles. This company is known for the production of railway cars and trams. The first in this duet is the Sinara electric bus, designed for 80 passengers, with a very good autonomous range of 250 kilometers, and with the ability to recharge both through the so-called night charging, and with the help of ultra-fast charging stations at the end points of the route. The capacity of 10 battery modules is 312 kilowatt hours. Since this electric bus began to be developed even before the sanctions complications, it was equipped with a leading portal bridge with two built-in electric motors from the German company ZF. Now this bridge will have to look for a replacement and, apparently, make a choice in favor of a conventional portal bridge and a separate electric motor. 
It is this bridge that was used in the second novelty of the company, the latest Sinara trolleybus unified with an electric bus. This bridge receives torque from a separate Russian-made electric motor. True, both portal bridges of this trolleybus are also German, but a solution has already been found to replace them with bridges of one of the Chinese companies. The possibility of using the Russian front portal bridge of the Raw Star company is also being considered. The bodies of the electric bus and trolleybus are unified, their frame is made of corrosion-resistant steel. The cabin of the trolleybus has 37 seats, and its total capacity is 90 passengers. With the maximum number of installed batteries, the autonomous running of a trolleybus can reach 80 kilometers. The Sinara company plans to launch trolleybuses as the first in mass production. Their production is being prepared in the city of Chelyabinsk. There is even a specific order already. It is planned to supply 168 Sinara trolleybuses to the transport company of Chelyabinsk. The most interesting thing is that the Sinara company is not going to stop at the production of trolleybuses and electric buses. The family of urban transport is planned to be expanded by buses, and their family will include models not only of large, but also of medium and extra large classes. That is, everything goes to the fact that another major bus manufacturer will soon enter the market in Russia.